For this lab, I'm using an entirely virtualized environment. Uh, I'm using Eve NG Pro actually as my uh, virtualization. And I have my whole lab built here. Uh, it's exactly the same as the one we looked at before. I'm also going to add a T-Rex traffic generator. I'm going to build one actually. Um, now in EVNG, you can either add your own Linux uh, box or use one of the ones that they kind of uh, preloaded for you. I've downloaded an image that is supported in EVNG, and there's a, there's a few. Um, you can actually go to EVNG and look at the documentation and see how to either download supported Linux images and add them, or how you can actually create your own and add your own in there. Entirely up to you how you do that, um, but we're not going to go into that very far. I've got a Linux box which is working, and you can see where I uh, have an Ubuntu server 16.04, and I also have Ubuntu desktop running 18.04. Again, the flavor of Linux doesn't matter. If you um, are good enough with Linux that you have a preference, I would suggest you use the whichever flavor it is that you use. I like Ubuntu, and I'm building this uh, for people that maybe don't have a lot of Linux knowledge and don't need it to get started with the T-Rex. So I'm gonna build a T-Rex on top of Ubuntu desktop. It's a little bit uh, easier to use with Windows, people coming from a Windows world. I would suggest that you allocate at least four vCPUs to it, as well as about eight gigs of RAM. You, Ethernets, you will need a number of Ethernets um, equal to the amount of port pairs you want to create, so those client and server pairs. If uh, you're wanting to send multiple streams, you'll need you know, a pair of Ethernet interfaces for each stream. And then, of course, allocate one interface for management, uh, specifically for connection out to the real world to grab packages for Linux and to download the T-Rex software with uh, Git. So in my case, I'm going to send, uh, ultimately, I'm going to send two streams, one from each branch to the data center. So I'll need four interfaces plus one for management. So that gives us five interfaces. Um, here you have the option to create kind of a, a MAC address um, so that it will allocate future MAC addresses for each, for all five interfaces. It's up, to, it's up to you if you put that in there. Uh, I would suggest if you are using Ubuntu desktop to change, to change the VGA to um, QXL. Oh, I did that wrong. Sorry. Uh, what I meant to say was to change the standard to QXL. The VGA is the is the video setting, and then the standard is saying uh, it only supports a very low resolution, and QXL means you can support the higher resolutions in Ubuntu Desktop. That's more of a quality of life fix. The rest of this doesn't matter. We are going to use VNC console in our lab. Uh, you can also use RDP. Again, if you use RDP, you need to have uh, connectivity between your uh, Linux desktop, your Ubuntu desktop, or whatever, and your host machine so that you can launch RDP from your host machine to the Ubuntu desktop. I'm going to use VNC. It's basically the same stuff, uh, and it works very well for the lab. So there you go. Now I've created a T-Rex Linux box, and now I need to connect it. So the first connection I will make will actually be to what's called a management cloud. So we can take a real close look at that. I've already used it for my root CA, so I could set it up. Uh, I have another Linux box running as a root CA and the vManage workstation. I've downloaded some software to that, and so I had it connected to what's called Management Zero in EVNG. This is just a bridge that, man that uh, creates a network connection between the lab and your host machine, and therefore the rest of the internet. Uh, hopefully. Again, how, depending on how you have your home lab set up, you may, may or may not have this. Uh, but this is a cloud that should allow your box to leave the pod. And we're going to need that so we can download uh, package updates and also the T-Rex software. Now I'm going to set up my port pairs. I'm going to connect one to the client. 
And this again is standard uh, EVNG setup for picking our interfaces. I'm going to leave it as is. So our second port pair should go to the core, DC core for our server connectivity. And this is fine. You can see where we already have some connection set up, so that's why it's giving us E02. All right, let's connect to the second branch. So we'll connect the client there. Again, Ethernet three, this is fine. Ethernet one. And lastly, we'll connect our second port pair to the data center core switch. All right, at this point, we should be able to turn on the T-Rex. Um, it seems to have all the network connectivity that we need, both for in-lab and management connectivity. So let's turn it on and see if that's true. All right, so we've started our T-Rex. Again, I'm using the VNC console. Um, you can download the package uh, from evng.com that kind of gives you all the, the utilities to interact with all the different uh, tools and utilities. So for example, VNC is part of the, the Windows package. Um, I'm, my lab is actually on a server I'm accessing over my home network and I'm accessing it from my Windows 10 box. And so I downloaded the package uh, that includes all the tools and utilities from the EVNG website. And I would suggest that uh, you do the same. All right, now we've started uh, Ubuntu desktop here and we can see where we're using a user called user. This is pre-configured if you download the pre-configured Linux image off of EVNG. And the password is capital T, like Tango, EST123, so test123 with a capital T. We'll go ahead and log in. And we should get our desktop here. And again, you actually don't need VNC if you're not using Ubuntu desktop. Um, if you're using the CLI, obviously you could just use PuTTY or, or some CLI-based utility. Um, I'm trying, I'm showing Ubuntu desktop because I'm trying to appeal to people that don't aren't familiar with Linux. Um, again, if you know Linux well enough to be yelling at the screen and telling me why, asking me why I'm using Ubuntu desktop, then the answer is I probably shouldn't. If, um, but again, this is for people that aren't very good with Linux. So when you boot this, uh, you'll see we're in kind of a small window here. And if we make it big, it's not any better. This is the reason we changed that uh, VGA setting from STD standard to QXL which should support some higher resolutions. So let's take a look and see if we can. Um, okay, doesn't appear that we have the ability to change our resolution. So something got messed up with our initial setup. And this does seem to happen once in a while. So um, we'll live with this for now. When we shut this box down, we'll fix it. But for right now, it doesn't actually require that we raise the resolution. So we'll, we'll just fix it the next time we reboot it. Uh, there are some things we should check immediately after booting this box. So one thing I'm going to do is check the IP addressing. I want to check all the interfaces and see that they're up. Um, in this case, you can see, and again, if this is where higher resolution usually comes in handy, but you can see where we have um, configured, you know, one, two, three, four, five interfaces, and Ubuntu has allocated ENS3 through ENS7. So ENS3, in order of, of us connecting it to the network, and I'll show you what I mean, see, Ethernet 1, um, Ethernet 0, 1, uh, 2, 3, or 3, and uh, 4. So again, to recap, Ethernet 0, is ENS3 connected to the management cloud. E, uh, ENS or Ethernet 1, which is ENS4, is connected to branch 1 client. ENS5 is Ethernet 2 and is connected to the DC as the server receiving branch 1 client soft, uh, connectivity. Ethernet 3 
is uh, ENS6, I believe, yes, 6, connected to the branch 2 client, and Ethernet 4 is ENS7 connected on the server side for branch 2. So that's how it matches up. It usually starts at ENS3, and that's going to be the first interface you connect, which should be to the management cloud. And from there, you should build your port pairs in the order you plan to use them.